Hello, and welcome to Matthias' Rust Corner. Today, I'll be covering cancel safety in Rust futures, or rather, the dangers of lacking it. I will explain what cancellation of a future means, and when it is not safe to cancel. I will then show what cancel unsafe and cancel safe futures look like, both handwritten and using anonymous async blocks. Finally, I will show you when cancellation may occur and when it will be a problem. Let's dive in. But first, what is a future? Futures are simply types for which the future trait is implemented. This trait provides the poll method, which we call to perform some work on the future. When the work is completed, the poll method returns ready, which then contains the outcome of the future. If a future is not complete, the poll method returns pending, effectively telling us there is more work to be done still. Let's use the analogy of loading a pile of bricks onto a trailer. Every time the poll method is called on the future, we spend some time putting bricks on the trailer, until the job is completed. So, what is cancellation of a future? Cancelling a future is simply dropping it before it has returned poll ready from its poll method. This loses any progress the future has made up until that point. With a brick and trailer metaphor, Cancellation would be someone stealing the trailer before we are finished loading it. For a lot of futures, this is safe to do, since they do not keep any state that is irreversibly lost when dropping the future. Some futures, however, may lose important work when cancelling them. To use a metaphor from Greek mythology, remember Sisyphus and the boulder? He keeps pushing the boulder up a hill, but always has to restart when it rolls back down to the bottom. If we consider the act of reaching the top to be the ready state of Sisyphus' work, the boulder rolling back to the bottom of the hill represents its cancellation. Effectively, every time Sisyphus drops the ball, he loses all progress made on the job and has to start over, just as when we drop a cancel on say future. Let's look at the practical example of losing work in a cancel unsafe rust future. As you can see here, we have made a future that calls a lambda function to perform some work every time it is polled. The lambda returns some u8 as long as there is work to do. The future stores that byte in an internal vector to collect all the bytes from the work. And when it is finished, it returns the whole vector in the poll ready. As expected, dropping this future means losing the collected bytes. To illustrate what this means in practice, Here's an example of how this looks if we write our polling by hand. It is not incredibly important to understand all the details here. The main point is that we call the poll method twice on an instance of our future. We then drop the future, and in the process we lose the data collected so far. Finally, we recreate the future and await it to completion. At this point, we see that we only got the last two bytes from our data vector. This is of course a constructed example still, but imagine now that instead of popping bytes from a vector, we're receiving bytes from a socket. As long as we temporarily store the bytes as part of our future, we are vulnerable to cancellation. But how can we ensure that we don't lose data when doing async work? The answer is fairly obvious. We need to store the work outside of the future. In this slightly changed cancel safe future, the future doesn't own the temporary buffer, but instead borrows it mutably. This means that any work we pull out of our work lambda gets stored safely, and we are free to drop the future and recreate it. We don't lose any data from cancelling anymore. How nice! Let's quickly discuss how this interacts with async await. Most people these days don't handwrite futures. Instead, we make anonymous futures using async blocks. Let's reproduce the two examples from before, but now using async syntax. This async block more or less reproduces the cancel unsafe behavior from before. Since all variables owned by the async block gets dropped when they drop the future, this has the same cancel unsafe properties as our previous handwritten future. Similarly, in this cancel safe anonymous future, we reproduce the cancel safety of the handwritten counterpart by borrowing instead of owning the working buffer. Lastly, let's quickly mention the most common case for this to be a problem. The select macros, 
either from Tokyo or futures, lets us write fairly elegant code when we need to pull multiple futures in a loop. Imagine an application where we want to listen for user input and application events coming from a WebSocket connection. We can implement this using select so that we process the output from the first future to complete. As we see here, we use the select macro from the futures crate to process messages in a loop. For each iteration of the loop, we construct new futures. The select macro will poll all the futures, but as soon as one of them polls ready, it will execute the associated branch and continue. This means all the incomplete futures will be dropped, losing any progress they may have made. This is especially problematic since it's very easy to forget checking if the futures you use are in fact cancel safe, and select is such a handy tool to use. Let's summarize. Today, we covered what cancellation is and how it can be explained using the Sisyphus metaphor. We went through some examples of what cancel unsafe futures may look like and how we can write cancel safe versions of it. And finally, we showed how the select macro can cause future cancellation. That's it for today. Make sure to like and subscribe to get notified about subsequent Rust videos. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.